This is my iPhone 14 Pro and currently it has 95% battery health. This makes me wonder, is it possible to keep your iPhone's battery health at 100%? There are many speculations online about that, but I think it's time to break things down and see what I and probably you should have done differently to preserve the battery health. So let's jump right in, shall we? Before I actually start listing all battery saving methods, I think it's important to understand how the battery health is measured and what it really is. To keep it short, the battery health is basically the capacity it retains with time. So if your iPhone battery says 95%, it means that the battery has the 95% of the designed capacity right now. Seems uh, simple, right? But what if I tell you that the way our phones measure capacity is not entirely accurate and that batteries themselves are different from the factory? That's where it gets interesting. But let's talk more on that later. The first thing the internet will tell you to do is charge slowly. Most people prefer prefer fast charging to a slower one and there is nothing wrong with that, we live in a fast world, so fast charging is the name of the game. All those manufacturers of Android phones are coming up with ways to charge at 200 watts, but Apple is still sticking to measly 27 to 29 watts. But there is actually a good reason to choose slow charging instead. One, it puts less strain on chemicals inside. When a battery charges, it basically turns the electrical energy from the outlet to a chemical energy thanks to all the chemicals inside. And when you need the charge, the process turns around and all that accumulated chemical energy transforms back to electricity. Here is the twist. The slower you transform the energy, aka charge, the less active the chemicals are, because all that separates all those flammable chemicals from your hands is a thin battery cover and a phone's case. So the chemicals are nice and slow, and so is the temperature. Temperature is the second reason to choose slower charging. The less your battery heats up, the more stable it is. Again, Again, don't forget about how little separates you from a second degree burns. But what does all that have to do with battery health? Well, a lot actually. And it has mostly a chemical background. You see, when the electrical energy transforms into a chemical, the electrons from the current are rushing inside the battery's chemicals. And when that happens fast, the chemicals become less active. Basically, the faster charging sucks the life from the chemicals inside the battery. That's a huge simplification, but still. And this slow charging method really does work. One of my friends uses the MagSafe charger, and after almost a year of using the iPhone 13 with that, he had 99% health left. Oh, and if you're considering using wireless charging, I recommend you get an official MagSafe charger. This charger does not only stick to your phone with magnets, but it also has temperature sensors and other electronics inside, which helps charge your iPhone in the most optimal way possible. The Mag MagSafe, Puck, and iPhone communicate and decide together how to charge. So I think that is worth a couple extra dollars. But what if you are using a slow charger, but the battery health is still dropping? Well, another thing that contributes to battery degradation is the way you use your iPhone. Tell me, how often does your battery go to 0%? Because even if you charge it slowly, but do it twice a day, you're still hurting the battery. It's just as I said, the movement of those electrons is what matters. So when you discharge the battery, you make the electrons move fast. And if you do that often, the battery dies. The best way to really see the scale of how you use your phone is with cycles. One cycle means your battery goes from 100% charge to zero. If your battery goes from 100% to 50%, then you charge it back to 100% and discharge to 50% again, this would be a cycle. To check the cycle count, you will need quite a few things. First, download a shortcut. I'll put a link in the description for you. Once you download, the new shortcut should appear in the Shortcuts app. Tap on the three dots icon and scroll down to design capacity. You need to enter the exact battery capacity of your iPhone. Just Google the number, okay? Next, go to settings, privacy and security, analytics and improvements, go to the analytics data option and look for the most recent file named analytics. Click on the share icon in the top right corner and choose our shortcut. Give it a second and boom, you got your cycle count. This number cannot be changed or influenced and no trick can help you make it lower. Another charging related trick that you should try is enabling optimized battery charging. Everyone knows about this feature, but if you're new, I'll explain. With this feature turned off, the iPhone will charge to 100% in one continuous go at a stable speed. This is not great for the battery, especially if your charging schedule is somewhat fixed, but if you turn this feature on, the phone will analyze your schedule, learn your habits, and charge at a variable rate. It would start charging fast, reach 80%, and then turn on super 
super low power charging that will give just enough power to charge in time of you waking up, for example. This way, the battery won't go through a full charging shock and the chemicals won't get all moody. And let's not forget about using good charging bricks and cables. Apple has engineered every stage of the charging process and each element is talking to one another. The charger talks to the cable and the iPhone. All three items work in tandem. And if you don't use the MFI certified charger, your iPhone cannot know exactly how to charge and the charger itself will likely output the default power, thus damaging the battery. And the cable is important too, since Apple made cables are designed with specific currents in mind and they have various sensors and stuff in them to help transfer electricity from charger to the iPhone. So if you were thinking about saving a few bucks and buying cheap charging accessories, you most likely will only damage the battery even further. Now it's time to tell you about two main problems with measuring battery health. One, all batteries are different. Even if the chemicals are the same and the physical size is the same, it's totally okay to have a battery that's slightly bigger or smaller than advertised. Usually these deviations are less than 1%, but there surely are situations when the capacity is bigger by a couple percent. Also, iPhone batteries are all manufactured in different factories by various companies. So not only the capacity can differ, but also the quality of the chemicals itself. We all know that Apple checks everything thoroughly, but it's not a secret that some battery manufacturers are better than others. This fact makes counting health more difficult. And two, the way our iPhones measure the capacity is by measuring the maximum current the battery can put out. With the battery degradation, the number gets smaller and smaller, and the iPhone knows how much current the battery should produce at every stage of its lifespan. So it just assumes the battery health based on the real-time readings. So as you see, the measurements themselves are not very accurate. But what about those people who do have 100% health after a year? Well, I'd say they are extremely lucky. In their situation, they have everything lined up perfectly. First, the battery is the most high quality one. Second, the capacity is probably higher than normal. Third, they surely use slow charging methods and have optimized charging turned on. And fourth, they probably aren't heavy users. It is physically impossible to keep your battery at 100%. And if the phone itself says it's at 100%, health, it isn't. The flawed nature of measurements and imperfect technology make it difficult to really access the correct state of the battery. And a variety of other factors like software bugs can make you think the battery is in a better or worse condition than it really is. <laughs> so here is my advice to you. Just use your iPhone normally. All that over caring about the battery isn't worth it. In a few years of using the phone, you'll most likely sell it or trade it in and the battery will be the least of your concerns. And even if you don't sell it, you can always just replace the battery. It's not that expensive either. So just use your iPhone like you always do, because if you start making your life difficult, it will lose its beauty. And I hope this video was helpful and you learned something new. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and see you in the next one.